get types of user down because these uh, this information is going to help you during our lecture so in the middle the rounded structure is the neural tube on either side of the neural tube we have three different types of mesoderm just adjacent to the neural tube we have paraxial mesoderm then we have the intermediate mesoderm and then adjacent to the intermediate mesoderm we have lateral plate mesoderm lateral plate mesoderm is further differentiates into three types of mesoderm that are somatic mesoderm splanchnic mesoderm an extra embryonic mesoderm. I hope this is clear because this information is going to be useful uh, for, for the uh, lecture. Now coming to the development of the skeletal muscles. The musculature of the, of the head, axial skeletal and body wall are formed by somites. And what are, from where do somites develop? Somites develop from paraxial mesoderm. This is paraxial mesoderm and this paraxial mesoderm it gives rise to somites on either sides of the neural tube. From the occipital region quarterly these somites they differentiate into three regions. Sclerotome which is the ventral region this is sclerotome. Then Dermatome, which is the upper region, this is dermatome, and two muscle forming regions, which together with dermatome are called dermomyotome. The two muscle forming regions they include two uh, uh, areas, two regions, which are called hypomere. Hypomere is a ventral region and it gives rise to hypaxial muscle. So this is myotome. On the ventral side there is a hypomere which uh, give rise to hypaxial muscles and on the dorsal side there is epimere which give rise to epaxial muscles. Derivatives of epaxial and hypaxial divisions are hypomere which is, uh, which is the hypaxial division if give rises to muscles of limb and body wall which are innovated by ventral primary rami. Epimere or epaxial division give rises to extensor muscles of back, neck and spine which is innovated by dorsal primary rami. Now coming to the development of muscle fiber which is also called myogenesis. As we discussed myotomes which are the muscle forming regions in uh, somite. The cells of the myotome are, uh, uh, there are cells in the myotome which are called satellite cells. These satellite cells, they become elongated and spindle shaped and uh, are called and transform into myoblasts which are precursor uh, uh, cells for the muscles. These myoblasts then fuse together to form myotubes these myotubes further fuse together to form multi-nucleated muscle fibers. By the end of third month of intrauterine life, cross striations appear in these muscle fibers, in these skeletal muscle fibers we are talking about, which are characteristic feature of a skeletal muscle. Now coming to the development of the smooth muscles. With mostly the smooth muscles are derived from splanchnic mesoderm, surrounding the endoderm or endothelia of the gut and its derivatives. Vascular smooth muscles, they differentiate from somatic mesoderm. So mostly the smooth muscles, they are derived from mesoderm, except the muscles of iris, which we have, where we have sphincter pupillae and dilator pupillae, and the myoepithelial cells of sweat and memory glands. All these are ectodermal in origin. Okay, so let me repeat it once again. All the smooth muscles are mesodermal in origin except muscles of the iris which include sphincter pupillae, dilator pupillae and myoepithelial cells of sweat and memory glands. They are ectodermal in origin. Development of cardiac muscles. So cardiac muscles they also develop from splanchnic mesoderm. 
surrounding the endothelia of the heart tube these cardiac muscles they uh, are joined with one another through special attachments which later develop into intercalated discs and then uh, they uh, they join with one another they fuse together and this typical branching network of a cardiac muscle for ease of um, uh, 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 passage of impulses is formed so this cardiac muscle uh, is formed from the splenic mesoderm surrounding the endothelia of the heart tube now let's summarize uh, whatever we have uh, discussed already mostly the muscular system develops from the mesoderm in third week of embryonic development so this is the gist of it muscular system develops from mesoderm in the third week of embryonic development skeletal muscles are derived from paraxial mesoderms in paraxial mesoderms somites develop somites uh, in somites two muscle forming regions develop which are called myotomes uh, 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 which are called myotomes these there are two myotomes hypomere and epimere which give rise to hypaxial and epaxial muscles smooth muscles are derived from splenic mesoderm around the gut except the muscles of the iris and myoepithelial cells of sweat and mammary gland and cardiac muscle they also derive from splenic mesoderm around the heart tube so in gist all the muscular system it develops from mesoderm now coming to the clinical embryology of muscular system first we have pollen sequence what is pollen sequence pollen sequence is characterized by absence of pectoralis minor muscle and partial loss of pectoralis major muscle usually the sternal head as you can see in this picture which is a typical characteristic picture of pollen sequence um the, uh, on the left side uh, is the affected side and you can see that the nipple and areola are displaced so they are either displaced as in this picture or they can also be absent usually in a uh, pollen sequence along with the absence of pectoralis minor and partial loss of pectoralis major muscle it on the affected side there could also be syndactyly syndact what is syndactyly syndactyly is fusion of one two or more digits or there could also be brachydactyly which means that the digits on the affected side are short and stubby so this is all about pollen sequence pollen sequence let's just let me just repeat once again pollen sequence uh, there is uh, there is absence of pectoral pectoralis minor muscle and partial loss of pectoralis major muscle nipple and areola are displaced or absent on the affected side on the affected side there could be syndactyly or there could be Becky Dectory. So this is pollen sequence. Prune-Belly syndrome. What is Prune-Belly syndrome? Does anyone have an idea what a prune is? This is a prune. Aloo bohara or plum. This is fresh prune, and this is a dried prune. So what is prune belly syndrome in prune belly syndrome there is complete or partial absence of abdominal musculature causing the skin of abdominal area to wrinkle and appear prune like as in this picture you could see the abdominal skin of the baby is wrinkled shriveled and appears prune like it's like a dry prune the the abdominal wall is so thin that organs are visible and can be easily be palpated a uh, sometimes uh, this prune belly syndrome is associated with urinary tract and bladder malformations including urethral obstruction urethral obstruction leads to accumulation of fluid that distends the abdomen resulting in atrophy of abdominal muscles so in gist prune belly syndrome in prune belly syndrome there is complete or partial absence of abdominal musculature 
causing the skin of the abdominal area to wrinkle and appear pool like and it could be sometimes associated with urinary tract and bladder malformations including urethral obstruction this is a typical picture of prune belly syndrome prune belly syndrome uh, uh, it can also be called uh, this uh, typical um, uh, picture can also be called do belly like do is arte ki do or uh, maide ki do you know flower or a uh, wheat do that's what this is now coming to muscular dystrophy muscular dystrophy it is a term for group of inherited muscle diseases that cause progressive muscle disease let's discuss duchenne muscular dystrophy or dmd it is s linked recessive usually passed on to the child from the mother side males are affected more than females there are mutations in gene for dystrophin symptoms begin at 4 years of age and worsen quickly most children are unable to walk by 12 years of age the voluntary muscles are affected first especially those of hip pelvic area thigh and calves this is a typical these are the typical features of uh, dmd shoulders and arm are held back up awkwardly when walking belly sticks out due to weak belly muscle child is poor at sit ups sway back weak butt muscles th- thin weak thighs knees may bend back to take weight poor balance falls often awkward clumsy if walking thigh heel cord contracture thigh heel cord is actually tendon and there is contracture of it so due to uh, that contracture child may walk on toes weak muscles in front of leg causes foot drop and tip toe contractures later it progresses to shoulder and neck followed by arms and then respiratory muscles are also involved uh, which re- uh, then uh, uh, when the respiratory muscles are involved after that the child requires respiratory support torticollis torticollis is mostly due to birth defect uh there are tearing of fibers of sternocleidomastoid muscle what is sternocleidomastoid muscle it is a muscle of neck as you can see this muscle is a sternocleidomastoid muscle then there is hematoma formation ultimately leading to fibrosis of muscle fibers and shortening of muscle so it is also right neck is or torticollis or congenital tortic uh, torticollis are one of the same things uh the head is tilted towards the affected side in it there is contracted sternocleidomastoid and chin points away from the contracted muscle these are the typical features of congenital torticollis or rhinec 